bimanual or biaxial microincision phaco emulsification is not just about the size of the incision. It's really more about increasing control and efficiency during surgery. So when we've reduced our incision size from 1.5 to less than one millimeter, it's not simply because we think smaller is better. It's also because increased control can be an advantage during surgery. One of the steps of surgery in which these micro incisions add to control is the capsulorexis. If you've noticed through a two and a half or three millimeter clear corneal incision using utrata forceps to complete a capsulorexis, it's very common for viscoelastic to burp out of the incision with subsequent shallowing of the anterior chamber and loss of control of the capsulorexis. With this technique, with this sub one millimeter incision, you can see that minimal viscoelastic is able to egress during my maneuvers and therefore the chamber remains absolutely steady. In this situation, I can really custom design my capsulorexis, making it whatever size I choose and making it perfectly round without any loss of stability or control. This is increasingly important with newer generation intraocular lenses, including multifocal, square edge, and accommodative lenses, which demand a more consistent, centered, and round capsulorexis. Hydrodissection and hydrodelineation are also facilitated by these smaller incisions. As you can see, there is a delayed burping of viscoelastic during my hydrodissection, which means that the pressure in the eye builds to a slightly greater level, allowing greater cleavage of the cortex from the capsular bag. This instrumentation for 700 micron FACO was developed by Microsurgical Technologies, and you can see I'm using a horizontal irrigating chopper in my left hand with a standard horizontal chop technique as originally described. I'm going to bury my 700 micron tip centrally in the nucleus, and you can see the vacuum build and the display on the left as I complete my chop and fracture the nucleus into two pieces. In this case, they are asymmetric. The cleavage plane was not directly through the center of the lens, but that is not a problem. We will then address the larger segment of the cataract first, again, horizontally chopping that and developing a nice piece or segment, which we can then draw centrally and aspirate with our tip. The Venturi system on the Bausch & Lomb Millennium is particularly effective for bimanual microincision FACO. The high vacuum control with minimal surge is excellent for withdrawing material using minimal ultrasound energy. And you can see here that I am, in fact, completing aspiration and emulsification of this segment and so far, only 1% average power and an adjusted FACO time of zero seconds, only one second of elapsed FACO time, which means really I've only gone down into foot position three or ultrasound now for three seconds. I'm using very little ultrasound. I'm really using vacuum to extract this material. With older machines with larger amounts of compliance in the system, surge has been a problem. However, using this 700 micron system, surge is reduced because, of course, there is a limitation to aspiration flow by virtue of the smaller inner diameter of the tip. What this means is the ability to use higher vacuum and aspirate material effectively without loss of chamber stability. Chopping techniques have been described as advantageous because of the reduction of ultrasound energy. Our paper on power modulations in phaco emulsification, which we published in the Journal of Cataract and Refractive Surgery in 2001, demonstrated that uncorrected visual acuity is directly correlated with reduction of ultrasound energy during surgery. So the less ultrasound we have to use to remove the lens, the clearer the cornea, and the better the patient sees immediately. In fact, uncorrected visual acuity on day one is really how our patients judge the effect of our surgery. They know immediately if they're seeing well, if they're able to function, and can go play golf, play bridge, and uh, socialize with their neighbors the day after surgery uh, without relying on spectacle correction. And this is really by by virtue of the clear cornea and also the use of accurate biometry, IOL power calculations, and in many cases, multifocal or accommodative lens technology, which also allow distance and near vision without spectacle dependence. 
Following aspiration of the nucleus, we are now going to address the epinucleus with a different uh, setting. We reduce our power further and uh, switch to a little bit lower vacuum setting. And as the epinucleus is trimmed in foot pedal position three, you can watch the cortical material from behind the epinucleus also flow into the phaco needle. This is the technique of cortical cleaving hydrodissection, which Howard Fine originally described in 1992 and initially was touted as allowing us to throw away our INA. In fact, about 70% of the time, uh, most of the cortex is cleared uh, with the epinucleus. About 30% of the time, it's still necessary to do a small amount of uh, aspiration to remove uh, residual cortical material. Again, a very clean bag is important uh, for our surgery for prevention of posterior capsular opacification and for the efficacy of accommodative and multifocal intraocular ocular lens technology. So here you can see uh, following the removal of the epinucleus, there's just a few tiny strands of uh, cortical material which I can remove uh, with my aspiration tip. Uh, total uh, absolute phaco time, which is the amount of time that I would have been using ultrasound had it been 100% power, is still reading zero on the machine. I've actually been in foot pedal position three for 17 seconds. I'm now going to construct a 2.8 millimeter temporal clear corneal incision and inject my intraocular lens. Of course, in the United States, we still do not have available FDA approved micro incision lenses, which can go through sub 1.5 millimeter incisions. Uh, but we have been impressed by the work of our colleagues in India, uh, Europe, and Africa in implanting these micro incision lenses. And we look forward to their availability uh, here uh, in the United States. We can almost always deliver the trailing haptic Technus uh, intraocular lens uh, series lenses uh, with the plunger of the uh, insertion cannula and then simply remove our viscoelastic, also still using our uh, bimanual technique. The temporal clear corneal incision seals beautifully, uh, often even without a stromal hydration, but we consider stromal hydration an important adjunctive safety procedure for infection prophylaxis. Thank you very much.